Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. First thing is most certainly first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And whilst you're there, remember to let me know how you're doing out of 10, because for me this week, I'm gonna say that I'm about nine out of 10. You know, it's been a hell of a week. It's been a lot of highs and lows, but we're one week out from the wedding and things are starting to get done. Things are coming together and I feel like there's some light at the end of the tunnel. So it's been one hell of a slog, but I'm really excited for it. So onto the highs and the lows of the week. Lows of the week, there is a couple. Uh, firstly, they've come and collected the TV reactor earlier in the week, which was, you know, another sad day. And I've actually got a bit of a complaint about the paying system. We got paid about 890 quid or something like that for a heifer that was 14 months old based upon its age. Yet that heifer, if it was killed, um, would have come to about 1200 pounds dead weight. So I've got a bit of a discrepancy there, in my opinion, because I just don't see how, if you want people to get on board with TB testing and the whole culling regime and that, which I think is fair enough, you really need to be compensating them to a standard that is actually equal to what that animal is really worth in the real world. So I think they really need to review that, especially considering beef prices have gone up so much. Also, we've got bull trouble, because obviously last week I mentioned that we've got bull issues with Lewis, who's just here, who's hurt his penis, and we've got 007, who's got a bad foot, where we had the vets to Lewis. Um, luckily, Lewis is getting better, but he's not going to be able to be used this year. We don't even know if he's actually going to be able to be used in the future, but at least we're keeping him alive. There was a worry that he wouldn't be able to urinate, which would have meant that we've had to have him put down, because um, he would have ended up with sepsis in his, of his bladder, so... Luckily, he is able to urinate, so we are able to keep him alive and hopefully he'll be able to be used in the future. And he's responding really well to his antibiotics and stuff. So that's one positive out of a really bad negative. Um, but also, 007's foot isn't getting any better either. So we can't use 007, which means we've got to go out and buy another bull a bit sharpish. So I'm going on Monday to go and look at a bull in Shropshire. Hopefully that one suits us. Um, but <sighs> it just seems one thing after another. I mean, it just seems to be trying really hard and getting absolutely nowhere. While I'm here, I'm not sure if you can see Lewis's penis, but there shouldn't be that bump there. That shouldn't be there. And the whole thing was massively swollen all the way down the sheath. It come out about where my finger is. It was like this beforehand, and it's gone down a hell of a lot. Um, but yeah, that bump shouldn't be there. We don't quite know what that bump is at the minute, but hopefully as we treat him with antibiotics, that swelling will go down. There's a theory now that there's an infection somehow um, and that's spread back into his penis and that's what's causing that bump. But until he's done his antibiotics and he's got a bit more, uh, got a bit better, we can't do a lot about it to see whether he's actually going to be any use in the future. On the plus side though, if you haven't worked out from my attire, which is full waterproofs and wellies, it's actually raining outside, which is in stark contrast to earlier in the week when it was boiling hot. It was 40 degrees here. It was ridiculous. And that's when I filmed this video. So um, get yourself a cup of tea, sit down, and I hope you enjoy it. Whoa, it is hot. God, it's hot. Staying in livestock farmer mode. I've kept the spike on this time as well because we're busy. We've been carting bales. We've carted all those bales there. Winter barley straw, you can see. They're all stubble fields now. The round bales in the distance. There are some more behind us as well, but the grain stores are full next door. So that's given us a bit of leeway, a bit of extra time. We can start and think about getting something done here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to mow this arable silage that I've drilled on this field. Now this is peas, barley and oats. You might have seen a video about this before. I did a recap a few weeks ago and yeah, I did a video when we actually drilled it. This field though is super hard and dry and I've got a bit of a plan for this field long term because it's probably one of the worst fields on the farm. It's not the heaviest field we've got, but it is very heavy. I'd argue that where the herbal layers next door is heavier and also where we've got another GS4 herbal lay um, at the back of the wood down the other end of the farm, that's heavier as well. This one is up there though, um, but this one just lacks organic matter. It's just so hard. It's like trying to drill crops on concrete. Um, so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take this arable silage off, we're gonna bale it, and then we are going to put it in with a grass lay, um, quite a long-term grass lay, for like four years of a grass clover lay, something we can get a couple of good cuts of silage off, then we'll probably rip it up, put it into wheat for 12 months and then put it back down to a sort of four year grass lay again. So I'm hoping over the next 10 years that this is pretty much grass all of the time. And that should help sort out some of this lack of organic matter. I'm also gonna chuck a bit of muck on here as well before we drill it, um, all of which is only gonna help. Now it's not the thickest, as I mentioned, it's been so dry this spring that it has kind of held this back a little bit. It's about knee height, something like that. 
like I say, not the thickest. There's, we've got the oats in here. We've got peas um, and there is barley in it as well. The barley is kind of a bit hit and miss. It's a bit thinner here. There's, it's a lot better in the middle and it goes thin again at the end. We've got oats pretty much across the whole field. We've got barley, I would say, over three quarters of the field. And then I would say we've got peas over about two thirds. So it's a pretty good mix. And considering how dry it's been and whatever else, I can't complain about this too much. So yeah, we'll get the mower on, get it going and see what we can do. Try and drop some of this and we'll get it sort of bailed and wrapped up in the day. Cause while it's this hot, sort of 40 degrees, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna dry out pretty sharpish. Also, if you're wondering about what stage these are at, the oats are kind of just about going over now. They're quite milky still. You can see there, that's about perfect. Barley is pretty much the same. That's milky as well. It's like that. And the peas are just at that nice stage where if you actually pot them, and if I can get one out one-handed, if you can get them out, they are. They're kind of like nice and green. It tastes really sweet as well. So they're just at a nice stage. This should be rocket fuel. It's not quite as much as I say on here as I'd like, but it should be bloody good stuff. Tell you what as well, I could eat these peas all day. So tasty. And there she is, she's all mowed. Given the year, the conditions, the weather we've had, everything else, I can't complain too much. She's had no fertilizer or anything like that. So yeah, not bad, but we'll uh, go and get the rake on now, take the mower off and go and do a bit more. doing everything possible to stay cool today. Got the Hexbys on and uh, even resorted to wearing a running vest because it's super lightweight. It's like a race vest, so. And it's still boiling. Did I ever mention it was hot? Just gonna point out the herbal lay's growing back pretty well. Um, mainly the sort of chicory and the plantain, which have quite a deep root. They're growing real fine, the grass is just a bit dry not growing as well but yeah surprising how how good it's doing Just heading back to the yard now to put the wrapper on. I was just noticing the beans, you can't quite see them because of the hedge, but really struggling in the heat. Proper shriveled up. Oh dear. Everything's suffering.
those bales smell so sweet. They smell really nice. And they weigh like a ton as well. So heavy. If you're wondering from other videos what colour combination I'm going for, I'm actually going for black and light green on the uh, whole crop bales because then I can tell them apart from everything else. did think about putting them the same as the herbal lay bales considering they're going to be fed to the young stock as well, but I thought maybe I ought to be able to tell the difference, so yeah, black and light green. Now somebody said to me uh, ages ago that if you're going to do this kind of arable silage whole crop type baling then make sure that you put plenty of rat bait between the bales when you stack them because the rats just absolutely love them and I'm not surprised that they do because they smell amazing and even those peas, just they're just so tasty um, so I'm not surprised the rats go mad for it and we always put plenty of rat bait between the bales anyway even just our normal silage bales and it's surprising when you come to the winter you never find any it's always all gone and we don't actually have that many rats around the yard at all so it must keep on top of them pretty well so yeah if you're thinking of doing it Plenty of rat bait is the key, um, and then a lot of finger crossing, I think, to make sure that they don't get in there. I actually had a little bit of trouble as well wrapping those bales, because I'm not sure if I've mentioned it, but it's actually really hot today. And um, they were just stretchy. The stretch wrap was stretching and snapping. It was sticking to each other, itself so much, and it's quite windy as well, so we are having two rolls of wrap at the same time. It was blowing them together, and they were getting stuck and then tearing. So we got through them in the end, but it was a bit of a challenge. And that is it for another video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And whilst you're there, remember to let me know how you're doing out of 10. Now, I'm just about to go and get my breakfast, and then we're going to weigh some cattle again before a busy weekend of getting ready for this wedding. Whatever you're up to this weekend, I think the weather's going to be decent. So have a great one, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.